knitters. Happy third Sunday of Easter. Oh my gosh, I left my coffee downstairs. Okay, whew, tragedy averted. Welcome to the podcast. Happy third Sunday of Easter. I have my coffee in my adorable mug. Oh, isn't it so cute? Anyway, this is the Nitty McPurly podcast. I am Devin Ventry. You can find me at nittymcpurly.com. I am Nitty McPurly on Instagram. And if you want to email me, I am Devin at nittymcpurly.com. All that is below. Oh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. Thank you so much for clicking on my video and welcome. Yesterday, my husband and I went to um, Culpepper to celebrate our anniversary. And we basically went antiquing all day, which I have never really done, but it was so fun. And I realized I love antiques. I love them. This is four ounces of coffee. <laughs> so like if you like really strong coffee, which I do, this is a good amount. But otherwise, you know, it's like five sips and you're done. <laughs> um. The weather is gorgeous today. I hope it is where you are too. I am really excited. After the podcast is all done, I'm going to go sit on the porch in the sunshine and just enjoy the day. So moving right along to progress and shop news. So my shop was insane over the past week. Last week, we talked about the faux set knit along, the faux set along, and I suggested that you buy my yarn. And every single one of you was like, okay. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you so much for buying my yarn. It's been a very busy week. I have been dyeing yarn like a crazy yarn dyeing fiend. And it's been really fun. I have really enjoyed it because I love to dye yarn. My life is amazing. I have an amazing job. Everything is great, right? I have coffee. What else could I possibly want? So I put the Dubrovnik DK on sale for 20% off, which it still is if, you know, you're one of the very few people in the world who didn't order any, you can go order some now. Please do. I love dyeing yarn. Keep me happy. Keep me busy. Uh, you need the code and it's on my website. It's FOSETALONG2023 to get 20% off. And you can get 20% off the FOSET pattern, which I am wearing today because it is beautiful as per usual. Oh, isn't it so pretty? I love this one. So this is the first one that I made. And this is Dream in Color Classy, which is their DK. And all of this is discontinued, but whatever, right? I mean, how many DK options are out there? Um, but yeah, I got this yarn at a um, going out of business sale when the yarn store in Warrington went out of business. And uh, the Red Thread, it was called People kept coming in looking for thread, I guess. <laughs> Maybe they needed a yarnier name. I don't know. But um, anyway, I've got it over this dress, which is it's actually kind of a good combination because this dress is ugly on the top. Like it's the armholes are too big and it's too low. It looks like a nightgown or something. But I love it with a sweater over it because it's just really long and super comfy. So anyway, all that to say... Uh, the Fosset and the Wee Fosset, which is for newborn up to age 10. And at that point, the regular Fosset picks up. So all human beings can own a Fosset. You can knit a Fosset for absolutely anyone because the pattern's available for everyone uh, in all sizes. And that pattern and all the yarn to make it is on sale with that code. So Go get just the pattern if you want. Go get some yarn if you want. You can make it with only three skeins of yarn if you're working with a 44 inch bust or lower. Above that, you need a little more, but below that, three skeins of yarn and you are good. Um, the knit along was like crazy popular. I just was shocked. I was amazed because it's not a new pattern. I published this pattern in 2020 and um, lots of people have already knitted. There've been lots of faux set knit alongs already. Makes me think I just need to do this once a year. Like this is gonna be our yearly April faux set along because we always need another one. And apparently I do too, because even though I have four of them, I cast on a new one. <laughs> faux set knits itself, like 
I should have called it, you know, the sweater for people who like fun, easy things because it's super fun and it's super easy and it's fast and you don't need yarn from the same dye lot because you're using three different colors. It's just a great pattern. Um, but I really, I realize that I don't have one in my colors. So that brings me to another announcement that I want to make this time. And that is that I have a new color. <laughs> so I realized I needed a deep purple. I have thistle. And thistle's a great purple, but thistle is a medium tone. It's a, it's a medium hue. It's in the middle in terms of value. Its value is in the middle. It's a gray, right? We talk about the blacks and the whites and the grays. But I needed a purple that was a black. And so I dyed up Poirot, as in Hercule Poirot. Isn't it great? Look at it. It's so pretty. So it's this, you know... Um, joins Fathom and Black Forest Cake in the deep, deep value category, but it's purple. So I'm up to 14 right now. And I, you know, 13 was never going to last. Like I'm not superstitious. I mean, I'm a little stitious. No. <laughs> Michael Scott joke of the day. That's out of the way now. Um, I'm actually not superstitious at all. I don't like superstition one bit, but 13 was always a weird number. Um, so I went with one more and now I have Poirot. So this is, you can see that it fits in super well. And I cast on my new faux set in Poirot and my other favorites, Morel. There's Poirot with Morel and Bosque. It's kind of similar to the one I already own, the faux set that I wore last week. Um, it's a little bit similar, but I love it. I just love it so much. So I cast this on yesterday, wound the yarn up yesterday, cast it on, and I'm using Poirot as my color A and Morel as color B. I didn't really get very far, and I think it's because I was just knitting um, in the car on the way down to Culpeper, and then we were so busy that I just didn't really knit very much. I was looking around, and, you know, we were doing stuff, so... Um, Anyway, this is available right now. This color is available right now on my website. I have some in stock, but what I don't, you can pre-order. And I had a lot of questions about that. Like, what the heck is the pre-order? What, what does that mean? Um, people always want to click on the picture. And the picture does not link to a thing. The pictures are just the pictures. You have to go to the drop-down box and scroll down. So here on the screenshot, I circled the DK pre-order, which you can, you know, the 20% off applies to that. Um, and also another thing that I added to the shop. So with Poirot, there's also the ability to order just a mini skein in the color you want. So let's say you want to try a color and you're not sure you don't want to go with a whole skein of it. You just want to try it. Or if you need just a little bit more to finish a Frankfurt fingering project, um, you can order a 20 gram mini skein in the Frankfurt fingering. That's where we are with that. Right now, I just said a lot of stuff. Sometimes I have these ideas in my mind and I've got them all organized and then they just kind of all fall out at one time. So uh, this is available in some weights and it's available for pre-order in other weights, but you can definitely, if you're interested in making, um, in making your faux set along with me in these three colors, and they're my ones that I have on display back here. This bowl I got yesterday, and my cup I got, and this adorable pitcher. It's got some flowers in it right now, but it's this really fat pitcher that's just so cute. It doesn't really go with my decor, but I loved it. So I thought, stick that in there. Um, yeah, so I really needed a faux set in Nitty McPearly colors because all the ones I have right now are either in scraps or other people's colors or whatever, but I wanted to show you one in my colors because that's what I do. That's what I do. I make stuff in my own colors. Um, but this is such a fun pattern to make because the colors are always changing. The pattern is always changing and it's very simple. The mosaic knitting is super simple. Faucets knit themselves. The only thing that slows you down, there are two bobble rows. That's it. Two, two rounds with bobbles 
and that slows you down because there works like every couple stitches. Um, but I feel that they are worth it. One thing about a bobble is if you don't like a bobble, you just knit that stitch because a bobble is worked on one stitch and they're easy to omit, but I wouldn't. I think that they are totally worth it. Um, bobble placement is important too because you can misplace a bobble and you can have it in a place where you, you don't want one. So you'll notice that these are very strategically placed uh, up here in the neckline, not any place where you would not want a bobble. <laughs> um, but it's just a really fun pattern. So if you have not knit one before, looks good on everyone, frankly, especially over a dress. That's my favorite way to wear the faux set. Uh, and it's great for spring and summer. So anyway, if I have not yet convinced you, um, I, there's nothing else I can do. I, I, I can't say anything else to convince you if that didn't do it. But go over to the website and grab the pattern or some yarn. And isn't it great? I just love it. So I, my mom is a long time Agatha Christie fan and I know that she's watching this. Hi mom. <laughs> uh, and I couldn't really get into it when I was younger, but lately I've been getting into Agatha Christie. I think because so much modern fiction has so much garbage in it. Like I don't wanna read any trashiness in a book. So I've been going back to older books because they're just trash free. And that's one thing I love about Agatha Christie is that her books are trash free. Um, but I, I just kind of started, and when I'm reading a book, a lot of times I'm listening to it on audiobook because I just don't have time to sit and read a book, but I can listen while I do other things. So I've listened to A Mysterious Affair at Styles, and I'm listening to Murder on the Orient Express, and both of those are Poirot books. Uh, and I don't know, I just, the, the Deep Purple is very, you know, it just, it reminded me of him, so. And it's a great word, great word. So there is that. Um, with regard to the faux set knit along, so if you wanna participate in the knit along, here are the rules. Has to be a new cast on. If you have one in progress, that's fine too. You can include that, we can grandfather them in. Um, you know, if you're like on the bind off, I'd say maybe not, but if you're midway through or, you know, just started or whatever, if it was a languishing whip, that's fine. You can you can pick it back up again. That will count. Use the same hashtag as the code Fosetta Long 2023 on Instagram and the the pictures, the finished Foset pictures that go with that hashtag. And you can post pictures that are, you know, in progress if you want with the hashtag, but only the finished pictures will be considered for the giveaway, which will happen on May 31st. So you have between now and May 31st to knit your faux set. If you pre-ordered yarn, those will ship out early this coming week. Um, yeah, so that you can get started. I know you're probably dying to get started. I was dying to get started. Uh, it's just so much fun. So anyway, uh, yes, and you can order a new mini skein. Okay, I also have restocked the color collection. Um, this is all the colors. I've had them in DK, but I was out in the Frankfurt fingering weight, so that's back. Also, the Just the Neutrals and Just the Rainbow um, are back in stock, too. And I have not included Poirot in these yet. I will, but I have to go back and change change everything, and I just haven't had a chance to do that. But if you wanted to, you could order just the mini skein of the Poirot on, you know, in that color. Um... So I have been wanting someone to use my color collection in a sweater and a wonderful knitter named Vaughn did that for me. Thank you so much, Vaughn. It looks so good. This is Vaughn's sweater. This, I put it on Instagram yesterday. It's the Moxie sweater by Shayna Bilo or Billo, I don't know. Um, but it's a super, super cute pattern. And what Vaughn did, so this is a DK weight pattern. So what Vaughn did is she used my color collection in the Frankfurt fingering weight and she alternated it with pewter and she held it all double with mohair. And it looks so, so good. I love it. I love a fingering weight held with mohair to sub in for DK. It doesn't always work. You don't always get gauge, but sometimes you can go up or down a size 
usually you'd go up a size just to give you a little more space in the pattern. Um, but it looks so good. So anyway, moving right along to the topic of the week. This week's topic was sent to me by my lovely friend, Dora. Dora had a story um, a while back and she was my right hand woman at the retreat. Hi, Dora. And she sent me this, she sent it to me as a, a blog that someone had written about the topic. And then I kind of delved into it a little bit more to talk about it on the podcast. So in Van Gogh's painting of his room, he included a, a red lacquer box filled with yarn. And this was one of his belongings that's at the Van Gogh Museum. You can go there and see it. Uh, and the blog article that Dora sent me was a recreation of the room. They recreated the room in this other museum and they had a red lacquer box with just some random yarn in there. And, and the, the blogger's point was like, why did they just use this junk yarn? Like, why isn't the yarn better? Because she was a knitter, writing it from a knitter's perspective. Um, but when I dove into this topic, I really found a lot of information that I thought was super interesting and wanted to share with you. So Van Gogh used yarn for color theory. Um, and I read that this red lacquer box was in all three paintings of his bedroom. But when I went to find the pictures of his room, I just found this one at the Van Gogh Museum and I don't see the box. Do you see it? I just don't see it. There's something sitting on his bedside table. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Um, but anyway, this was a box that belonged to him that he used for color theory. So this that I'm going to talk about now comes from a, I think, Dutch website. It was translated into English so that I can read it to you and I can understand it. But it explains the yarn and why Van Gogh had the yarn and how he used it. And it it took me down a rabbit hole that I was not expecting. One of the most curious objects preserved at the Van Gogh Museum is a slightly battered Chinese red lacquer box containing 16 colorful balls of wool and a few loose strands of yarn. Some of the balls are a single color, golden yellow and intense blue green, while others combine two or three colors of twisted yarn, such as dark violet and bright yellow or yellow orange and light green. It is known for certain that the balls of yarn belonged to Vincent van Gogh because his close friend, the artist Emile Bernard, mentioned them in an article on van Gogh written shortly after he died. Van Gogh was painting in the 1880s. In case you weren't sure, I get confused on when exactly these people lived. So we're talking like, you know, 140 years ago, like not crazy, crazy long ago. This unusual box of yarns relates to the artist's understanding of color theory and derives from a specific educational practice. To explain the significance of this box and how Van Gogh used its contents, the author says, I will examine the most important threads that make up his understanding of color theory. Then she says this, and I almost stopped reading after this next sentence because it just seems like so much nonsense. She says, I will also show how these threads weave together to reveal a complex pattern of fundamental social and philosophical questions that revolve around how ideas and practices travel and change and how notions of childhood learning, creativity, and genius are intertwined. And I was like, no, you're not. That's nonsense. Just stop. So I'm glad that I didn't stop reading because this led me to things that made more sense to me than that much garbage. She says, this singular box of yarns provides a valuable key, and it does, to understanding Van Gogh's formation as an artist and how his development dovetails with changing ideas about education and art education sweeping across 19th century Europe. Mm. Maybe. Okay. So Van Gogh appears to have used this box of yarns not only to experiment with color as Bernard, th that artist, described, but also to help define the palette for specific pictures. Some of the balls of yarn can even be matched to particular paintings. A ball of harmonized yellow tones relates closely to still life with white grapes, apples, pears, and lemons. 
and another consisting of yellow, green, and red yarns is comparable to apples. However, people are reverse engineering this. Like they're going, hmm, do these go together? Maybe, I mean, they're not proving that Van Gogh did that, but maybe. So she goes on, I'm, I'm torn on how much of it to, to go into. Basically the gist of it is that there was this chemist who came up with the ideas of the laws of simultaneous contrast and successive contrast, which I'll, I'll explain in a minute. So this chemist writes this like really detailed scientific book about it. Then this other guy named Blanc writes a book that's more for regular people, kind of explaining it. And Van Gogh is influenced by Blanc, but he got this idea from Nguyen. I'm not sure how to say his name, but anyway, this color idea is filtered down to Van Gogh. The law of simultaneous contrast means basically what I've been telling you about a white, a black, and a gray. And that is that by having contrast in your work, you draw the eye to the work. Now, Van Gogh used this law of simultaneous contrast in his painting called Cafe Terrace at Night. So take a look at this. Obviously, the background is in the dark and the foreground, the cafe, is in bright light. And the contrast between the dark and the light draws your eyes to the cafe and the seating area. This painting illustrates the law of simultaneous contrast. Simultaneous meaning you're seeing them both at the same time. And things that are juxtaposed together in a certain way make you look at them differently. Another example of this is, do you know the optical illusion of the two lines that are exactly the same length, but the one has the arrows that go this way and the one has the arrows that go this way? And when you look at them together, one looks shorter than the other because the arrows go in and the other one looks longer because the arrows go out. That illustrates the law of simultaneous contrast. Things that you're looking at at the same time affect the way you look at them because of the way that they're juxtaposed or because of the colors, basically due to shape and color. Does that make sense? When you juxtapose stark contrasts, you get good art. So I had one knitter uh, put her three color choices on Instagram and they were three pastels. And she said, Devin, this is what you meant by a black, a white, and a gray, right? Three pastels. <laughs> if you do that, your overall value is going to be the same. Value is the darkness or lightness of a color. So by having a black, a white, and a gray, such as this, and my white is not that white. Morel is you know, really more of a light gray, but I think it still works. You get more contrast. Now, the law of successive contrast um, doesn't really apply as much because that's like if you look at one thing for a little while and then you look away, because of what you just looked at, you see something, the successive going from one thing to the next. So um, I think that could play more in like a shawl where, you know, your eye kind of travels over it. Um, like in a fade, I guess, that would show the law of successive contrast. But I just thought that was so interesting. I think that, and you know, this article goes into the nitty gritty of that, but I kind of just broke it down for you because I felt like as knitters, what we want to know is how do I pick a color? I feel like picking a color is hard for people and a good way to think about it is a black, a white, and a gray. And that's in a three color design. You know, um, my Vesper test is just finishing up and it's only a two color sweater. And there's all different types. Some people picked what would be like part of, you know, two pieces of a gradient where they're two colors that are the same but have a different value. Some people picked colors that have a similar value. It's it's all interesting. It's all interesting. Um, but anyway, I thought that was, was super, super interesting. 
Um, anyway, and I liked how it supported what I had already said <laughs> in, you know, picking a black, a white, and a gray. Yeah, yeah, cool. Okay, moving right along to the comments. Um, we talked about tatting last time, so I got a lot of comments about tatting. Uh, Ghislaine Van Weasel said, Hi, Devin. I think that tatting is called frivolité in French. Interesting. Oh, someone said you're sold out of DK. Uh, and I was, I mean, my, my in-stock DK yarn sold out immediately. But you can always pre-order and those will ship within a week. So you just scroll down a little more and you choose the pre-order option for the DK. That's how you do it. Got lots of questions about that last time. Um, Brenda Tucker said, I learned about tatting in the 70s. That must have been when it got popular. I don't care for the Pico look of it. I tried crochet lace and I hope to do knit lace someday, which is very easy. I mean, it's just, I mean, it depends on the project. Some projects are more difficult than others, but you can put lace in a lot of things. Um, there's also a needle lace, but I think without research, an older method of lace making is bobbin lace. Hmm. There are several different styles based on country of origin. Interesting. Lace is interesting. Um, you know, you just think of those little old ladies with their tiny needles, you know, working. I think it is like a sewn process, like Spanish lace is like amazing. Many of the royals had lace makers. Hmm. Interesting. Um, interesting in information about tatting. I thought, oh, Amy Sparkle says, I thought it was a form of crochet used to make lace. It kind of is, I think, sort of, a little bit. Off to hunt down yarn for the faucet along. Yes. Cool. Oh, Denise Pettis. Denise has knit, I think, two faucets this year. She said, thank you for sharing that you have four faucets. It is a fun to knit and beautiful pattern. I've already knit two this year and purchased yarn for a third in March at a fiber festival. I sometimes knit patterns on repeat, me too, and sometimes feel judged for that for my mother, um, feel judged for that, my mother knitters and my fam from other knitters and my family. Oh, girl, no, there's no judgment. I love repeat knitting. I've done tons of it. Uh, I think it's just really fun and it's kind of mindless a little bit. You know, you're not like, oh, did I do it right? You, are, you just did it, so you remember how to do it. Um, but you should totally knit the thing you want as much as you want. Um, oh, cool. I got a lot of views on my last podcast, and I think it was the faux set in the picture, which is why this week, again, has another faux set, because we're still talking about it, and it's um, clickbait, apparently. <laughs> Wendy Knopp said, I recently finished my first faux set and wore it for Easter. I don't think I've seen a picture of the finished one, Wendy. Did you post it on Instagram? I don't know. If you did, maybe I missed it. I'm not over there as much as I would like to. I will be stash diving for the faucet along. Awesome. Sewing is another love of mine too. Making my own clothes is something I'd like to do again, but for now it's quilting and sewing project bags. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot to tell you. So last week I started working on the sagebrush top by Friday Pattern Company, I think. See, I've already forgotten. Anyway, so this is the top for my stepmother-in-law. I haven't finished the hem or put the sleeves on, but this is that fabric that she gave me. She doesn't watch the podcast, so uh, it has the tie in the back and I finished the end with a little knot. Um, but this is how far I got last week. It needs to be ironed. So this is, I forget, it's like, I think it's like a 60-40 poly cotton. So it, you use like a cool iron on it and this has just been folded up since last Sunday and it has gotten a little bit wrinkled, but I think it'll be nice and I think that she'll like it. It's got kind of a puffed sleeve. Um, so yeah, I did get to work on that last week and this morning Charlotte told me that she wanted to make a zipper pouch. So we're doing that today too. We'll see how much time I have for that. So many good comments. Thank you so much. Uh, Mary Ellen Landon said, I love the look of your faux set with your dress. I bought the faux set pattern and I'm going to make it and wear it with a dress. Oh, I'm wondering what fabric your dress is made of. It looks wrinkle free. The one I wore last week is double gauze. Um, double gauze, it depends. Some of it is crinklier than others. That particular one was not very crinkly. It's a really nice one. Nanny Eero. 
I will write that in the box below because you're going, what on earth? It's a Japanese double gauze, N-A-N-I, Nanny, Eero, I-R-O. It is like the most amazing double gauze ever. I have a dress made out of Nanny Eero. That one that I had on last week wasn't, but it was as nice as that. I got it from the fabric store in Haymarket that went out of town, uh, went out of business a few um, years ago. But, um, and this one that I'm wearing now, this is a store-bought dress, but it has a similar kind of crinkly look. I feel like it might be like a rayon or something. Anything drapey, rayon, and that you would have to iron. Um, but double gauze is great because it's super cool in the summer. It's cotton, thin. People make baby blankets out of it a lot, but it's great for dresses. Love, love. Nanny Eero double gauze. I'll link it below in case you forget and you want to look back and go, what was that thing that she said? Um, yeah, awesome. There are so many amazing comments. I cannot read them all, sadly, um, but I do appreciate them. Moving on to knitting fantasies. So I was thinking about the Moxie sweater by Shayna Bilo Designs, and that's, she's on Etsy, she's on Ravelry. She sells her patterns in a number of places. Uh, but I found them on Etsy, and I will link those down below. This is the Moxie sweater. It is a DK pattern, as I said. Um, but you can always hold a fingering weight together with a mohair, you know, and that may or may not get you gauged for DK, but it looks like it worked for Vaughn, so it's possible. Uh, this is an $8 pattern, and it comes in all the sizes. I really like size inclusivity. I just don't want anybody to feel like they can't knit a pattern, you know? Like, um, most people are a certain group of sizes, but not everyone is. So it's nice to have patterns in all the sizes. I just number mine one through eight, uh, but my older patterns used to be like, you know, XS through 3XL or whatever, you know, just going up one at a time, but whatever, whatever. Anyway, um, but that got me thinking, the, the Moxie sweater got me thinking about Shayna Bilo Designs and I thought, let's take a look and see what else Shayna has. So I found a t-shirt that she had called the Plumosa A-Line T. This is also a DK weight t-shirt, which is nice because it will work up faster than a fingering weight. Um, and it is A-Line. So there's a couple pictures of her wearing it over a dress here at the beach. And it's it has like a doesn't look like it's tremendously A-line. There are also pictures of it on Etsy just laid out and it's not super A-line, but there are some increases toward the bottom, which you could leave out if you wanted to. That's always an option. Uh, and my third pick by Shayna, I really like this one. It is called the Chrysalis Blanket. It is a super bulky two color brioche blanket. And in the end, it is 45 inches by 64 inches. So full couch blanket size. This is knit in super bulky yarn. Now, there's no way this could be affordable in indie dyed yarn because super bulky is only 44 yards to a skein and you need 530 yards of each color. And that's just crazy. Like no one would ever use it. You'd be like, that's like a $600 blanket. You know, <laughs> that'd be crazy. So this would be a great, blanket to make out of and I would I would still want it to be wool but I would need to find some sort of does anybody know of a good 100% wool wouldn't have to be 100% wool I think I'd probably look at nitpicks wouldn't have to be 100% wool because I would want it to be soft you know um but some you know you can find that I don't know I didn't really think much too much about it but I, I would go to nitpicks I think to try to find a yarn to make this blanket in, but I really like it. And it feels like it would work up at a reasonable speed because it's super bulky, but also gigantic and two color brioche. So you have to knit each row twice, uh, but I think it would be worth it. I would totally, totally make that. All right, so here's what happened. No one sent me a story for today, but I kind of have one of my own. So I thought I would just share this with you. Uh, do you guys remember when a lovely podcast watcher mailed me an actual physical piece of the newspaper with the article about loose ends, and I read that to you on the podcast. Well, Jen Simonic, 
I called her Jen Simonek, but she emailed me and she said it rhymes with harmonic. So Jen Simonic, uh, who is one of the ladies who started Loose Ends, sent me a message and said, hey, thanks for mentioning it. Like, I really appreciated that. I think that's great. It's great to get the word out. Since the article was published, they've gotten like 900 more finishers. Lots of people have signed up. If you missed that episode, brief recap, Loose Ends is an organization who matches unfinished projects left behind by loved ones who have died. That happens all the time where people die in the middle of a project and their families don't know what to do with them. They don't wanna throw them away. So Loose Ends takes these projects and matches them with a finisher so that the project can get finished. And I think there's knitting and crochet, quilting, sewing, there's, they have all different kinds. And uh, that really resonated with the podcast watchers. People loved it. Lots of you signed up to become finishers. Um, and then I follow Willy Nilly Knits on Instagram. Does anybody else follow him? He's just, I don't know very much about him, but he just seems really happy and fun and happy and fun. And he signed up to be a finisher and I was like, oh, I just love it. I love it. I love that the word is getting out about it. And so I responded to her and said, you know, I, I just, I'm so glad that, you know, you watch the podcast. I'm, I'm glad we can get it out there. You know, this is a great thing to have in the world. And uh, she said, I was such a talented knitter and that meant so much to me. I just thought that was so nice. I, I don't think of myself as a talented knitter. Um, I think there are certain things that I'm good at, but I don't know that knitting is one of them. <laughs> I don't know. I think my work looks good, but I guess I see all the flaws and I, I'm, I'm one of those people who's okay with the flaws. Like I leave the flaws. So I feel like that kind of disqualifies me as a, as a perfect knitter, but that's okay. Anyway, if you have a knitting story, I do not have one for next week. So send me your knitting story. You can email it to me. You can type it out. You can take a video of yourself telling the story. That's my favorite because then I get to see your face and I know who you are. Um, you can record an audio recording, whatever you want. I would love to share your story on the podcast. Um, this is people's favorite part. So I need, I need stories, send me them. And it's amazing how often people are like, well, that's not really a story, but it is, it's a story. So send it to me. Okay. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I will see you next week. Enjoy your knitting. I hope you can get out in the sun on the porch and do some knitting and I'll see you next week. Bye knitters.